how can you tell if a compound is going to be soluble or insoluble in water? Well, you could just go and do it. I mean, that means you don't know ahead of time, but you could try it. Here are four different compounds. Lead to iodide, barium sulfate, calcium hydroxide, and zinc carbonate. They're insoluble in water. Well, that's not good enough. We want to be able to predict ahead of time. What about lead to nitrate, barium chloride, calcium acetate, and zinc sulfate? Well, those are soluble. We need to find patterns. We need to find general solubility patterns so we can make predictions. What about sodium iodide, zinc sulfate, potassium hydroxide, and ammonium carbonate? What I did is I swapped out all the cations for the four above for different ones. Well, those are all soluble, but that's, it's kind of random. I mean, sodium and potassium in a group 1A, zinc's a transition metal, ammonium ion, that's a polyatomic ion. What about some sodium compounds? What about sodium sulfate, sodium hydroxide, and sodium carbonate swapped in? Well, those are soluble. Well, let's take those four above out, and let's try some more sodium compounds. Sodium chloride, sodium bromide, sodium chromate, and sodium sulfide. Now those are soluble. Huh. Sodium compounds, or at least many of them, appear to be soluble. Let's try something else. Let's look at lithium and potassium compounds. And those are soluble. Now see, that's the idea behind this. You had people over the years go and do many experiments and, and then combine a list of general solubility rules. So the idea is to have a, a brief set of rules that help us predict solubility, but it doesn't go into the reasons why they're soluble or insoluble. The way this rule list is used, it's top-down priority. You know, for instance, all compounds of group 1A ions. So here's potassium chloride and sodium sulfate. So in general, your expectation is that if it's potassium something, sodium something, a lithium something that it will be soluble and you don't care about the anion. Now there are exceptions to these rules and we have to learn when the exceptions are important or when we've decided that they're not important. And we've decided at this level that we're not going to do any exceptions to this rule. So another one, we're going to say ammonium compounds are soluble. So there's ammonium carbonate, ammonium sulfate. We'll say nitrates, perchlorates, chlorates, acetates. They're going to be soluble. Now see, here's chromium 3 nitrate and lead to acetate. So let, let's kind of see how to use these rules. 
if you were trying to predict, uh, let's, let's take the lead to acetate as an example, whether that's soluble or insoluble. You start at the top and you work your way down. So you go, okay, lead to acetate. Is the cation group 1A? No. You go on to the next rule. Is the cation ammonium? No. You go to the next rule. Is the cation nitrate, perchlorate, chlorate, or acetate? Yes, it's lead to acetate. So in this case, we're not concerned about the cation, we're concerned about the anion. Compounds that contain chloride, bromide, or iodide ion. So here's cobalt 2 chloride. Uh, same idea if we work through the list. COCl2. You're going to have a rule that either gives you tendencies with the cobalt 2 ion or with the chloride ion. And then when you find an answer to your question, you stop. All right, there are some notable exceptions for the chloride bromide iodide rule. And so mercury 1 chlorides, bromides, and iodides tend to be insoluble. Same deal with lead 2 iodide and silver bromide. You could swap in lead 2 chloride, lead 2 bromide. Your same expectation. Silver chloride, silver iodide. Same expectation. Insoluble. And the sulfates, well, the exceptions are a little longer. You've got these six common exceptions. So your first impulse when you see a sulfate compound is, oh, it's soluble, unless it's one of these six. Also, in terms of priority, if you had sodium sulfate, sodium sulfate is soluble because it's sodium sulfate. It's group 1A. It's important to learn these rules top down. So barium sulfate. You go through the rules. Let's see. Barium or sulfate. Group 1A. Well, barium's 2A. Ammonium compounds. Well, that's barium. Nitrates, perchlorates, chlorates, or acetates. That's sulfate. Chlorides, bromides, or iodides. It's sulfate. All compounds that contain sulfate. Aha! It's soluble, except, oops, it's barium. Insoluble. See, the rule isn't barium compounds tend to be soluble or insoluble, because they're kind of mixed across the board. There's lead to sulfate, insoluble, because of the sulfate rule. And there's lead to nitrate, soluble because of the nitrate rule. Now these rules tend to change from book to book to book. Also, if you want a lesson in extreme frustration, do a web search on solubility and try to find a definition that's a numerical definition. In other words, what concentration cutoff do we have between soluble or insoluble? You won't find it. In fact, soluble in water is a very, very vague definition. You don't get a numerical cutoff, which, man, that's really frustrating sometimes. I've seen one rule that says if you can make an approximate 0.1 mole per liter solution of that compound in water, then we're going to go ahead and call it soluble. Also, these rules tend to change. The first four I put up there are pretty constant across books. E depends upon the book. Calcium sulfate 
is, in some rules, sparingly soluble. So you can kind of go one way or the other way, or sparingly. Uh, strontium sulfate doesn't show up on all the rules. So if you're using a different textbook, or if your instructor has decided upon something different, you go with what your instructor or with what your textbook says and realize there will be some minor differences. Now these two compounds, magnesium hydroxide and iron 3 hydroxide, how do you know if they're soluble or insoluble? Well, you run through the list. Start at the top. Group 1A compounds are soluble. Well, it's magnesium and iron 3. Nope. Ammonium compounds are soluble. Again, it's magnesium and iron. Nope. Nitrates, perchlorates, chlorates, or acetates. No, those are hydroxides. Doesn't help. Chlorides, bromides, or iodides. No, those are hydroxides. Doesn't help. Sulfates. Again, no, those are hydroxides. Doesn't help. So if you exhaust the rules that tell you that the compound is soluble with some exceptions, if you can't find an answer to your question there, the default is insoluble. Most solubility rule lists that I see have a section that tells you general rules for insoluble. I suggest you don't even look at those, at least not for prediction purposes. If you exhaust the rule list for soluble, the default then becomes insoluble. I think that's an easier way to look at it.